Let's do it. Sounds good. So I'm here with Massachusetts-based rapper, Wrath of God. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine, man. How are you doing today, brother? Man, uh, thank you so much for taking the time. Like, you know, um, I was listening to some of your music and stuff, everything. Like, um, how did you get inspired to start creating hip-hop music? Well, uh, I grew up in Boston, uh, you know, in the inner city. I went to Boston Arts Academy in high school. So, like, you know, actually... Uh, originally started with when some of my classmates did a like it was a performance of juvenile song make that ass uh shake that shake that ass whatever the fuck it was back in the day that was mystical i'm, I'm ba my bad but whatever ju juvenile song was back in the day they did a rendition i can't think of it off the top of my head and you know they got the crowd jumping and i was like oh i could do that so i started checking out different you know different talent and shit like that started listening to like uh busted rhymes to begin with rough riders and then I started getting into like, you know, people like uh, her, her Common and then Most Def and Talib Kweli. Um, and then I found MS Doom, Jurassic 5, people like that, Coogee Rap, the Necro. And it was just like, yo, once I found like Necro and Coogee Rap and then all the dark stuff, Esham and like King Gordy, you know, I kind of went that route because I wanted to get into that, you know, shock value type of stuff. I wanted to say stuff that's going to get people's attention. So, you know, that's basically what it came down to. And then I just always started you know, started writing or whatever. And then I got my setup like two years ago. I've been on Instagram for like two years and just started taking off, just slowly building, building it up organically. So the best way. Most definitely like, you know, um, doing like the type of music that you make, like, you know, as far as like the hip hop, I feel like that it's kind of like, you know, uh, a genre specifically that is like been overlooked a lot of times, like, you know, where people sometimes don't take it necessarily serious. Uh, do you feel like, you know, that's the case in your case? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, I come from, uh, you know, I listened to a lot of ICP growing up. They weren't really, uh, they weren't really the, the most lyrical uh, on my list because I, I was always looking for, like, you know, the bars, the metaphors. Like, it was all about the wordplay. It was all about the wordsmithing. It was about how cleverly you could put structure a song and this and that. But, you know, they, they, they did some dark shit, and I loved it. So, um so I kind of got into that, but you know, you know, jugglers are not really got the best reputation and stuff like that. And I always kind of like resigned myself as more like a, a deaf rapper. Like I was more like a, you know, a necro level and stuff like that. But I decided to go with the clown mask because I, at the time I own my own business and I, and you know, some of my people back in Boston, they saw me doing this and they were just like, yeah, you need to do it like that because you know, that's just hot. And, you know, I respected their opinion and shit and I'm glad I listened to them because, you know, it's kind of hard to stand out. The, the the industry nowadays, you know, the internet with TikTok and everything, it's just so watered down. You know, you got to stand out somehow. So that's why every time, like, I make my videos and every everything I say or I do, I try to make it stand out as much much as possible. So to be original and just, you know, get people's attention and be like, what the fuck did I just watch? Like, damn, what the hell is what this guy on? You know, people are people always ask me what kind of drugs I'm on and stuff like that, but I just smoke a little bit of reefer, so. Yeah, man, I um, grew up listening to, you know, Insane Clown Posse, you know, uh, a lot of like, you know, Detroit artists. So like, um, you know, speaking of Detroit artists, like, you know, it was the incident that's going on. Like, you know, I was telling you how I interviewed Kid Vicious and like, I guess you would like sit up for Kid Vicious and uh, Talib Kweli is labeled you. Me, a white supremacist, like, you know, obviously I'm black, like, you know, and stuff. I'm Jay-Z black, you know, I'm <laughs> yeah. so but uh, like, I wouldn't ask up for him, you know. I just, I just, I chimed in with my two cents, you know, because I, I am an opinionated person, you know. Like, I don't understand why people have this stigma with, you know, if you say anything that's against them or against one thing they say, that you're automatically, you know, all the way. Like, you know, I, there's such thing as people who's not bipartisan, who don't don't believe in the public Republicans or the Democrats. You know, we call them the Republicans and the Democrats. You know, they're both they're both evil. Their wings on the same bird or whatever, but. You know, so I kind of like lean in the middle. Like I, I, I fight for trans rights. My my dad, my dad was gay and stuff like that. I grew up, I grew up in you know Boston. It was a melting pot of, of multicultural personalities and people. You know, I went I went to so many different schools out there. We was bust all around the city. So I was very familiar with the city. I grew up in in Dorchester, right in Common Square. So you know that's smack dead and and you know whatever you want to call it, the inner city. So you know. Uh, you know, I've always just been influenced by, you know, I grew I grew up kind of middle class, had to work for everything. So uh, 
Well, you know, like, you know, been with that working. being said, like, you know, uh, Massachusetts just in general doesn't have the best reputation as far as like, you know, race. You talk about like Dorchester, you know, Marky Mark Wahlberg, you know, from there. Yep. Like, you know what I mean? And stuff, he like stabbed out the Vietnamese guy's eye, like when he was younger. And like, you know, um, even like, you know, the Boston Celtics games, like, you know, they have like, you know, a habit of like, you know, being as far as like racial epitaphs, with like, you know, being shouted at players and stuff and everything. Like, you know, yeah. uh, do, do, you feel, do you feel like, you know, like um, Boston is a racist city? Yes, it can be. You know, you got you got it everywhere. I, I went I lived in Boston most of my life and then I, I moved to Tennessee for 10 years. So I kind of got a taste of the South and the North. Right. And, you know, I'll say that you got racism everywhere. You know, you got people, you got, you got biggies, you got all kinds of people who are just looking to destroy and right. looking to divide because, you know, that's what it is. It's divide and conquer. You know, they, they learned a long time ago. That's why they built the KKK was, you know, they didn't want, they didn't want whites and blacks. They, they, they saw us starting to get, get together after the fifties, after the riots or whatever. And that, that's why they formed that shit to create this division. and. You know, it's all been part of the government's plan and just keep rehashing it, I feel like, you know, within people, whether it's, you know, people on both both sides. And that's why we got the, all this all this indifference and, and and people just feel a, full of hate. But Boston, yeah, definitely growing up, like, you know, you go to Southie, places like that, there was definitely, you know, there was definitely some people who were just like, da-da-da-da-da, and just ringing off the mouth. And there's all these different stigmatisms and stereotypes. But that was everywhere. But then I'd also go to school and there's also stigmatism surrounding, you know, being a white person in, right. in school. And, you know, we just we always just overlook that stuff kind of like doesn't overlook it. But, you know, nowadays it's like you just you say one thing that they don't someone doesn't agree with. And you're automatically this, you're automatically that. And it's all this generalization. And it's just like it's just like all this keyboard warrior stuff. And it's just like it's uncalled for. And it's like if people would actually sit sit down and have a discussion about things and see where they actually stand, they would see that you know we're all on the same side. Like, you know, I'm all I'm all for like calling out certain things because I I, I have been in other disputes with other rappers and I have found some dirt on them. They have some have some different things and I've called that shit out and put it out there, you know, and then then put on a track, whatever. And you know, the jugglers don't fuck around with that shit. We don't we don't play with Confederate flags. We don't play with racism. We don't play with pedos. Uh, we, we don't, we, we don't fuck around with that shit at all. Someone comes to the show and they, they try and do some silly shit like that. They get escorted out, not by security. Like they get escorted out, you know, on their back being carried. I, um, you know, I spent a lot of time in Boston, like, you know, and I, I, I enjoyed my experience there. Like I went to Harvard and like, you know, um, I lived in Cambridge. I've lived in Worcester before and like, I love Massachusetts, like, you know, just as a state, it's, like, a really great place and stuff, everything to spend time. I miss it of, like, all the places I probably, like, have lived. I miss it the most sometimes just because, like, the people were very, like, you know, um, friendly, you know, in their in their own way. Like, I think, like, you know, maybe Boston is, like, you know, probably not the um, the best city, like, you know what I mean, as far as, like, friendliness. But, like, overall, like, I, I feel you meet some really good, warm-hearted people. Yeah. And stuff and everything. What do you meet? Once you get in with people, then you're good. You know, you get, you got solid people, and it's always been like I said, Boston's always been like a very diverse melting pot. You know, so it's just been like you always you always never know who you're gonna meet. You know, I used to I used to bounce at a few bars, and you know, I, I talked to people from all over, and it's just so unique. And I I miss doing you know I miss that part of doing it, meeting all these different people from all over the world. You know, even some even though some of them became drunk dicks or whatever, but. You know, that's that's the beauty of it. You know, it was very diverse um, and everybody just once you once you got your group, you know, you was cool. And then you meet other people and you become cool with them. You go out to the bars, you meet people, you meet some cool people, you drink with them and shit like that. And, you know, it's mad chill. But, you know, that's it can be like that anywhere if, if you know how to mingle, you know, but I, I was listening to your song Fall Guy. It's pretty catchy. You know, um, what was the inspiration Thank behind that particular song? Um. So basically all my songs, like I, I'm called the rap of God. So like, uh, so the hardcore genre is mostly people talk about some deprived serial killing shit, but I do it in a form of like all my songs is about rap. And so the idea bef- behind Fall Guy was like, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be God is God saying, I'm not going to be the fall guy. Everyone's blaming God for their problems and all this shit's going wrong. And, you know, God, I feel like God and the devil is two in the same thing. Sometimes, you know, that's my philosophy behind my music. So, I basically 
take this persona of God walking the earth as his clown form and basically like causing havoc on humankind. And that's what the songs are about. Or, you know, it's all about wrath. So wrath can be wrath of man. So man doing something horrible to another man or wrath could be a storm coming and wiping, wiping your whole family out. So I try to just keep everything like that, but I try to make it into a, like a story form to where people can connect to it. So everything just starts out with like some form of, all right, how can I do this? But usually the way my songs come about, I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a punching rapper. So I punch in as I go and I just think of things as I go and I keep refining the, the bars and go back. And then I just think about what I'm going to say next. And I just record as I go. I never pick up a pen. Uh, I, I just, I just kind of record on two different tracks and just keep going and go back and, and fix everything. So I could just pick bar by bar, like, oh, I don't like that phrase. I'm going to, I'm going to say it like this. And then, you know, just do like 10 to 20 takes to get it right and just keep moving on. So, and that's basically like the, the beats usually just lead me in the right direction. I don't listen to the beats beforehand. I usually, I don't, I, I just pop it in and I make, I make up shit as I go and the melody will come to me. And I'll try a different. Yeah. That beats like this. And, and then, so I try to do a couple of different, uh, breakdowns and structures of, of the bars and see what works best and then that's that's it, it just kind of makes itself honestly i guess god just kind of puts it in there uh, you are say. you all worried about moving forward in your career because you know like talib kwali he's a legendary hip-hop artist he has a lot of followers and he's branded you and myself like you know it was racist white supremacist you know and like people who like you know maybe who have never like you know encountered your music or don't know you like you know could perceive that as the truth well, that's the that's the thing about the internet. You know, people are gonna take things out of context, so they're gonna just take certain things and run with it, or they'll take certain things and twist it so they can run with it because they want to feel a certain way or feel a certain emotion. So no matter what you do, you're gonna have that. People are gonna like you, they're gonna hate you no matter what. Like it definitely doesn't help. But like, you know, as far as the juggalo community is concerned, which is, you know, like people were trying to I got a comment from one of his people was telling me like, oh, you guys are just trying to talk to him so you can get signed. All right. I'd make music about cannibalism. Tell the quality is not going to sign me. Like even if I was his best goddamn fucking friend and was like, you know, sucking his tit, he's still not going to sign me. You know what I mean? Like King Gordy, he's one of the best MCs around, but he's never in the discussion because of why, because of what he raps about. You right. know, Royce said it himself, you know, he's definitely he's a, he's a top tier lyricist, but he doesn't get he doesn't get the flowers because of you know what he'd be rapping about so like in a way it's like ah uh, yeah this could just he's definitely going to discredit me as you know a white rapper and i definitely foresaw that but at the same time it's like you know i'm still i'm still young and upcoming so it's like whatever if it if it fails it fails you know it's not like it's not my main main thing you know this is just a hobby to me you know and people people that fuck with me enjoy my music enjoy my content they, they come for that and nothing else and people that enjoy the drama they come for that and you know so far the support on my side has been overwhelming you know behind the scenes and you know people if i feel like if we all organize and everybody speaks upon this and this is you know because this is on youtube right. this point probably this battle or not battle but he's been dissed i heard he's the most dissed rapper of all times you go on you go on youtube look up talib beefs you can find everybody interviews with all kinds of different other different rappers, Diabolic has toasted him. Like he's been roasted. One of my guys from, from my squad already dissed him a while back and, you know, it got no plays because, you know, he was just not trying to put out there, but he was just venting, you know, but like, so like, it's not, I'm not the only one, obviously, because we're having this discussion. So is that, is everyone's going to eventually see it for what it is, hopefully. And, and the real motherfuckers are going to stick around because they know the truth. And they, they can see like, obviously, like you know, what I mean, it's ridiculous. Like, I think some of the things that he he puts out, you know, uh is fact, and I feel like you know, it's very dangerous, you know, like you know, especially like you oh, know, yeah. he's like we're 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 more we have more in common, you know what I mean? And everything. you seem like a pretty inclusive person. I don't take I don't consider yeah. you a racist, I don't like support any form of white supremacy or any type of hatred as far as homophobia at all. And like, you know, it's like even like when I put this out, you know, he's gonna be on Instagram saying, like, you know. Oh, like we're, we're white supremacists, or like you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, not, not, not made friends. Looks like you. Looks like you Nazis are getting along great. That's exactly what he's gonna say. And like that's the thing. And and with me, like I'm a, I'm a fucking clown, right? So like I made the memes, the South Park memes. I made the, I made all those fucking memes, you know, and fucking I put I put those together and shit because to me the shit's comedy at this point. Like at first I got upset. Like let me tell you how this started real quick because let me take you back a few months. Like I, I grew up listening to him and whatnot. 
I was on Instagram for a couple of years and, you know, naturally I was thinking of people who, who I should follow. Common popped up. I was like, oh yeah, dude. And I went down memory lane. So naturally, you know, you stumble across Common, you're going to hit Talib Kweli. So I'm like, cool. So his, it just started popping up in my feed and I'm seeing all this shit and I'm like reading it and I'm like, oh shit, he's, he's fucking fighting. He's got all these fucking enemies. God damn, this is crazy. So I'm, of course, you know, I like No Jumper too. So I'm always watching that shit. So I'm just like, checking it out like whoa what the fuck damn who are all these fucking crazy nazis and shit like god damn they're fucking everywhere like i can't believe this shit and i'm, I'm i even commented some of them and said some shit he's even liked some of my posts and then one day he posted something about a vaccine and i'm like oh no i'm not with that like maybe you should i, I don't know what i said i forgot what i said it was the first time like you know he ever said something back to me and fucking uh it was like, I said something like, you know, maybe we should do some, or if Dr. Felshi lied, I forget what the post was about and shit. I'd have to go look, look for it. I never screenshot it. That's the only one I didn't screenshot, but he called me a Nazi over disagreeing with him over a vaccine. I'm like, what the fuck? And of course I'm like, nah, dude, I, I'm like, I, I listened to you. I, I fucked with you in high school. Like, yeah, we're on the same team. Da, 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 da. Uh, I could not change his mind. So I left it alone for like a few months. I like, didn't say nothing. Just kind of like sat in the back didn't even really look at it and shit. And then he posted something that I agreed with. And I was like, yeah, fuck those motherfuckers. Da, da, da. You shouldn't say the N-word. And he's like, oh, why are you pretending to be on my side, Nazi? Da, 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 da. You Nazis are dumb. And so, like, so every time he's doing it, like, I can see him saying it, you know? Like, this yeah, shit is yeah. calm. Like, I told him, I said, you need to make a Dave, you and Dave Chappelle should make a skit about yeah. you going on this fucking unhinged fucking craziness and like someone just saying, just like my memes, you know, hey, Tyler Foley, you know, the earth is 75% water. No, it's 90% water, Nazi. <laughs> like, that's fucking hilarious. Everyone who knows Tyler Foley, I'm sure you saw those memes and he laughed his ass off at first. And it was like, oh, I'm going to get this Nazi. <laughs> like, hey, bro, like, yo, it's, it's comical to me at this point. It's like, that's why I'm, that's why I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to post it, man, because I have yeah, it, seems, it seems like it's a Dave Chappelle skit sometimes. Like, you know, some of the things he posts, I'm like, this guy's hilarious. Oh, my God. Uh, man, like, you know, uh, I hadn't, like, replied to him and stuff and everything. Like, you know, he continues to add me. All I did was interview Kit Vicious. And, like, you know, I was supposed to interview his mom and, like, you know, and stuff and everything. She said I was a nice young man. I had an interesting YouTube channel and stuff and everything. She's done a lot of uh, work for the civil rights community. Like, I interview regularly, like, a lot of people who uh, do, like, things to promote Black excellence. You know, yes. like that's kind of like, you know, I think like the main topic of my channel. So like, I think that's crazy. Like, you know, he's like, oh, like you wanted. Yeah, it's weird, man. It's just, it's just totally weird. Like even, even, even some of my homies hopping in discussion and, you know, we got people like, you know, I, I'm, I'm with a few different underground labels and we got people from all over the world, you know, like fucking that I do music with, you know, people from Russia, people from Africa, people from, you know, Philly people from fucking Cali, you know, so like, you know, I get around, I got collabs with all kinds of people and we, I work with different labels. I got, I got a little radio, radio show and shit. You know, we, we collab with everybody. We vibe with everybody. We promote trans rights. Like I've always been on Talos, you know, I argue with conservatives too. I'm very opinionated. Like anybody, you go on my Facebook and I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight, you know, I fight with the left I, and I fight with the right. Cause I, I'm just right in the middle. Like now nah, both of y'all motherfuckers are wrong. Like this is y'all distracted by this and that, you know, but that's another story. But you know, it's just like, because I, I, I can't stand conservatives either. They're a bunch of hypocrites, too. It's like, you know, they, they want to tell a woman I'm pro-choice. So they they want to tell a woman how to use their body and shit. But then when it came to the vaccine, they're like, oh, my body, my choice. Like, nah, bro, you can't have it two, two fucking ways. Like, right. that, you know, and, you know, I, I understand people about God and whatever, but I don't want God. I don't believe God should be in the schools and push on people and stuff. And I don't think all the trainees are all the trains people are fucking you know, pushing an agenda on, on the kids because I grew up in a gay household and, you know, I was around gay people all the time. Nobody pushed it on me. Like I'm, I'm straight. I love women. Never, never had no issues. It's just like now this internet, ever since Trump's been in office, everything's just turned to fucking shit. As far as social media goes, it's like they, they turn social media into like a breeding ground, a testing ground of where people are going to, are going to sway and where they're going to, where they're going to divide to. But as far as Talib Kweli goes, I feel like, you know, if everybody just, you know, look him up, look up the beefs he's been involved in, look, look up why he's, he's not on Twitter no more, look up, you know, fucking what, what he got banned from, what, what, what lawsuits, why he's suing, what his mental state he was in, and, you know, it will all add up. And, and anybody, anybody who, can, who wants to use the noggin and doesn't want to just, who, who wants to be outraged by something, 
they should they need to be outraged by what he's doing, man, because it's it's kind of it's, it's it's just foul, man. It's just straight up foul. It, mo- it most definitely is, man. And uh, the wrath of God, I I really appreciate you for taking the time and speaking with me and like Absolutely. you know uh, sharing your side of the story because I feel like you know we live in an age like you know where like a lot of times and stuff and everything people can put something you know on social media and a lie like you know it's traveled like halfway around the world before like you know the truth has even had an opportunity that, that's, it, man. that's all it is like you know you instantly just say one thing they're like oh you're a trumpster and it's like no man i just don't agree with this part but like bro I fuck all that other shit and like no you're just get that. you're a bigot and it's like uh, what's, just, what, what's next for you as far as music well, I'm working on this crazy project, which is like, you know, more darker. So it's called the al- it's this album called The Evolution. Uh, so it's just basically, you know, my newer songs that you that you might see. It's going to be everything darker and stuff. And it's funny because I want to clarify one thing. Like I made this song called uh, General of Genocide, which is about like a cannibal who thinks he's God. And he's talking about how he's going to eat all these people in his basement. And of course, like I didn't, I wasn't, when I, when I made the song and I made the video, I had to put out, which there's nothing racist in the video, but when I put the shit out, like I wasn't thinking that I was going to be beefing with Talib Kweli. And of course, so, you know, they're trying to make the connection. There's little followers are posting, posting it on their thing, like, oh, not too much. So it, it's just, it's just so comical to me. So, but, and if you guys want to laugh, anyone watching out there on TV land, check out Talib Kweli's page and. You know, just see how he how how he Kanye's out all the time. It's it's just it's funny. Definitely, but, man. Raffle God, thank you so much for the time. Thank you, man. I appreciate your time, and you have a great blessed night. And stay dark. You as well. Thank you, man.